my, your wedding day. Such memories. Your smiling face, the love in her eyes, promising of a lifelong journey of understanding and support. So what the fuck happened? You out the house, she got the car, and you're recovering on your homeboy's couch or even worse, in your parents' basement. Life after marriage is not something most men are prepared for. Many don't even talk about the issues that affected what was supposed to be one of the best things that ever happened. What now? How does your life start over? It's time to talk about it. The Lame Show starts now. Hey, 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 guys. Welcome back to The Lame Show. This week, we have a very, very special guest. He's a unicorn in his industry. He's just, his name is Greg Dawson II. He's a licensed clinical social worker, and he's a sex, he's been a sex therapist for over 15 years with experience in mental health and social services. He helps his clients explore and connect with the origins of their sexual experiences and teaches them how to shift their sexual mindset to align with their physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual being. He's helped me a lot myself. So... <laughs> <laughs> Bars. Welcome uh, to the Lame Show, Greg. Thank you for joining, man. Show. Greg is here to talk about a, a special topic, an important topic, because in the black community, the the myth of the black sexual prowess is promoted through music, film, TV, and as divorced men, when we go back out there, some of us are older later in life. Some of us want to still see if we still got it, and we're still we've been dealing with this with this myth. Since we were kids. I know I, when I used to hear that a chick used to date a Jamaican dude, I used to be scared to go after him because he you know I'm the champion lover. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I was like, damn, she used, to make, she used to date a Jamaican. I know he kill him with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was afraid. But, <laughs> but when I found out they didn't eat pussy, I was like, I'm a get her. I'm a get her. Uh, I'm in the game now. I'm in the game now. I'm in the play. They don't eat pussy. All right. So, Greg, oh, what type of, what, have, what, what did you find when you started to look into this? Uh, I found that uh, when it comes to, uh, let's, just, let's just talk about straight, straight black men, right? Um, when it comes to straight black men, we're more vanilla than we'd like to admit. Uh, and with, what I mean by vanilla is um, it's not as much kink as we like to talk about with our homeboys. Our homeboys, we are sexual stars. <laughs> you know what I mean? We tan that thing up. But if you, if you, when you come into the room and we're having a sex therapy session, uh, it's it's not that. And you know, we have to understand that uh, we have to start learning how to define our pleasure, uh, what sex looks like, what normal sex looks like, what our own good performance looks like, what we need. And then uh, we have to differentiate that from performance sex, what we hear about in songs and on 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 uh, in, on porns and whatnot. And so um, we are all human beings, you know. Like like Jamal was saying, the champion lover. A lot of us aren't champion lovers. We in there, and we're doing. Some of us are doing great jobs. Some of us are doing good jobs, and some of us are lying about our stroke methods and how we are pleasing ourselves <laughs> and our partners. Stroke game is trash. To, so game is trash for a lot of us, you know? And we have to be honest. Listen, let me let me tell you something. My stroke game is trash learning, right? And sometimes yeah. even now, if I'm tired, my stroke game gonna be trash when I'm tired, right? Uh -huh. And so yeah. I have to be honest with myself that you know, uh this is what I have the energy for to, to do today, and this is what I have to provide to you, baby. And, and so we have to understand what uh she needs, what I need, and then we'll work towards getting her that pleasure she wants consistently but you know we, we'd be lying bro <laughs> we'd be lying would, you, would you say uh, we're all uh, we're a panel of divorced men would you say yeah. that and some of us I, I don't know if this to be fact for anybody and I, but there are men who are divorced that are in that place because their sex was inadequate for their wife yeah how do you help uh divorced men get through that or men in general get through the fact that they weren't the champion lover well, first and foremost, we have to give ourselves the freedom to be uh, things to receive and give pleasure and, and to enjoy it. Uh, that's that's one thing. A lot of times we like to do a lot of self-blaming. I didn't do her like this. And this is why I ended not knowing on the other side of it. Women have, you know, a lot of women aren't having orgasms. 
they don't know what pleasure looks like and feels like, and they get that lesson from somebody that doesn't have a sex ed, edu- uh, a healthy sex education. Mm-hmm. And so uh-huh. a lot of wow. times we we, t- we tend to, to blame ourselves for their lack of knowledge. And a lot of times we are well with on what good sex is, but we're, we're with a partner that does it, and then mm-hmm. we're taking the blame. And so, you know, when it comes to partner situations, divorced men, first and foremost, we can't allow ourselves to take the blame all the time, right? And we have to start defining or redefining what sexual pleasure looks like so we can just move on to the next best thing, whether it be just ourselves or with one partner or plenty of partners. So, you know, you got to give yourself a, a, a chance to enjoy pleasure and, and, stop, and stop blaming yourself for what you did in the past. So just making faces is not enough? <laughs> <laughs> he fell out his chair. <laughs> and and I, I'll be one of the first ones to admit that, you know, that, that – I'm going to say that myth to like to live up to expectations led to me being reckless because when I first started get back to having sex after I got divorced, I couldn't stay erect using a condom. So I would take it off. That flesh on flesh feels a lot different and I'm taking a chance. Absolutely. It's, and it's Absolutely. because I want to, I want to satisfy. There are other ways to satisfy other than stroke game. So yep. I fell victim to that myself. And, you know, my jerseys yeah. and the rafters are ready, but i got to <laughs> say that I made some bad decisions. <laughs> I made a lot yeah. of bad decisions, and I'm lucky I didn't have anything that's following me for the rest of my life. Right. A few things I want to give to that, you know, uh, that whole uh, sensation issue with wearing a condom versus not wearing a condom. Uh, a lot of times we have to figure out, uh, we have to go on that sexual journey. So, you know, there's lubes out there. Uh, that'll help us enjoy it when we're having condoms and, you know, make sure that lube, there's, there's cannabis lube, there's CBD lubes that give you that sensation. Right. Um, also uh, put that inside, like a drop of that inside the condom mm-hmm. so you can feel it inside. Mm-hmm. So we can mimic the, the, you know, how it feels without having a condom on. There's lubes that make this thing pop. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of men are, pop? <laughs> a lot of men are doing that. Get that a lot of men are doing that. <laughs> And so, uh, but also, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Listen, uh, I had a, I had, I had a few partners, man. I, I introduced Lou to her because you know, she just, we were doing all kinds. Of, I would go down, and she, and then it would be, they would be drenched down there, and then we're having sex, and she would dry up. Uh, for Grand a number Canyon, of reasons. Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon situation. I'm like, okay, look here, we're gonna introduce some Lou to this, right. and we're gonna enjoy it, and and the woman would be upset because. You know, there's this belief that, and, and I get it, because men have this too, but women feel like their their vaginas are the best Naturally thing on wet. earth. Yeah. Naturally wet, and there's nothing wrong. Right. But, you know, the, the, realistic, <laughs> the, the realistic part of it is sometimes women are just going to get dry, and that's just a normal thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with lube, you know, and, and men aren't shaming women in a heteronormative sex and enjoy each other. Right. But, again, that's women taking the blame like sometimes we do. And it, it goes awry because of that. Um, okay. But back to the conversation, Jamal was talking about, you know, sometimes I don't feel like putting it in. Sometimes, I, you know, those are just penetration only environments and couples need to start getting away from that. What does that look like? More oral, mm-hmm. uh, using hands. Some some women squirt more to hand jobs, right? To actually and hitting that use spot. Just go ahead and get in the, the what is the come in the come your motion right? Some mm-hmm. women actually squirt more to that than they do to men's penises, whether it's big, medium, or small. And so women aren't taking that necessary adventure to find that out, and they're saying, "Well, you need to get me there by your dick," and that and it's just not working for a lot of them. And mm-hmm. so you know, when Jamal was talking about, I just don't want to put it in sometimes. Well, sometimes women are benefiting from other ways, and that makes a relationship healthy when you have options. You know, that's a good point because, um, you know, as you mature and you grow up, sex is more, you know, than just penetration. Can you talk yeah. to us about when does sex start and when does sex finish? Sex starts when you wake up. Hey. Sex starts when you wake up. When you wake up, and I know this is a natural response, but a lot of us uh, are, are, are capable of, you know, having uh, the morning wood situation, right? Now, that's a reaction. You have your dreams or whatever going on or the, the the, the blood is flowing into penis. But when you have, you know, regular uh, morning wood activity, that means, you know, your the, the sexual functioning is there. You can get that rolling. When you're not 
not having it, then you're probably going to have uh, ED, right? Mm. And so there's ways to get that back. But it starts when you wake up, man. When you wake up and you and you want to, mm. if you're married, you want to roll over and ki- give your woman a kiss or your partner a kiss, that's when sex starts. That's when you warm up everything to the part when you're having penetrative sex or oral sex or whatever it is. You've got to do it from the time you wake up. Uh, what does that look like? Sex chats, sex texting, sex emails, conversations over the phone. Look, I want to tear that thing up or I, I want to do this or that. <laughs> remind your woman or have, your woman needs to remind you that the sex is still a priority. Right. And so it starts when you wake up. And a lot of times when we wake up, we have all these other issues going on, man. You got to find you a partner that, you know, you can really be in a safe space with and they can get your mind off of that for a minute and enjoy life. And then ultimately, again, enjoy sex. So it starts when you wake up. Man. And it you starts know what? before you get in the bed. There you go. So I have a quick question about waking up uh, with morning wood. If you're single, should you start your day beating one off or <laughs> rubbing one out just to start your day cleaning the pipes? <laughs> Look. Um, yes, yes, and yes. I, I think I think uh, solo sex is important. I think masturbation is important. Um, as we get older, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bar right there, bro. <laughs> that's right. It's Next important, right here. It's important, man. It's and important. you know, we 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 work in we live in shame cultures where we we can't we can't have sex with ourselves or sex with other people until we get married. Y'all know that. Y'all know the whole deal. Y'all know how that right. how that voice goes, man. Right. But Masturbation is so important, man. Go ahead and get you one off in the morning. Or you know, <laughs> I if you don't, like if you don't I want like to get you one, yeah. Yes. If you don't want to get you one off in the morning, let you let your partner know how you want her to get you off in the morning. And that's still part of solo sex, you know, just communicating and, and having that voice. Got it. Got it. I have another question, question if you guys don't bro. have one. Go ahead. Um mm-hmm. s- since you brought up squirting, I'm I'm bringing I, I you know w- what is that actually? Is it is it urine? Is it is it is it is it what is, what is he squirting out at you? It's urine, sir. So, so it's, it's some chemicals. Um, <laughs> I would say urine. It would not be urine. Sometimes you know, there's been studies where they found urine, and and there's been studies where they put like um, I want to say some kind of chemical uh, in in uh, the organs, and they found out it would shoot out and stuff like that. There's there's things to argue for and against that. But I think people are just afraid of afraid of piss and afraid of you know all the <laughs> look, piss is sterile, all right? And look, if it's shooting at you, she is giving you a compliment. I don't care if it's piss or any other thing up in there. Enjoy it. Or and go have your go, go watch and enjoy the moment. You know, we we're we're in a society where we feel like, you know. It, it has to be clean or not. Sex is sex is a nasty, dirty, and enjoyable situation, and enjoy it. This better when it's nasty and, anyway. And, and, and <laughs> it is. Right. Thank you, thank you, and enjoy it when it's nasty. But it can, it's also clean too. You know, I don't want to put it out there like it's just just bad. But it's it's na- it's nice when it's nasty. So enjoy it. When it comes to <laughs> sex between couples, uh, the the responsibility for pleasure is usually viewed upon the man because like you said, a lot of women think my pussy is the best pussy in the world. And all you need to do is get, look at me and you get, you should get hard. Should both partners take, be invested in making sure everyone is satisfied? Yes. 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 I I agree. I agree. (laughs) I agree. Because you have some women that, you have some women that just do the sunbathe pose. During sex, <laughs> and you're like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you is know, that, is that know missionary? He says that missionary. You know, it's missionary, marital you, missionary. Yeah, yeah, marital missionary. Oh, God. You know, I, you know, the I always say married people sex that that position on the side where she just put the panties to the side and you just go ahead and just, she lets you go at it. And the spoon that you roll not, over and go to work. Right, she is now putting the responsibility <laughs> on you to either get her off or get yourself off, but she's not invested. How how would you have? What do you suggest uh, a man does or a woman does to broach the subject of equal participation, even when you don't want it? Start kissing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, look, when it, when it comes to having pleasurable moments, we have to be able to uh, 
are, are we talking about relationships and marriage or we just, you know, I just found you and we just like sex and we just spent the night with each other. What's the situation? Well, you know, when you, when there's no relationship, when there's no relationship or marriage, you know, you're putting in your best work. <laughs> <laughs> but when the marriage comes around and you've been in it for a while, <laughs> That tends to slow you down a bit because, you know, the person's not going anywhere. You didn't had sex for the last three to four years. Yeah. I don't have to put in the, the performance yeah, I that I that mm -hmm. I did to mm -hmm. get you. So how do you, yeah. what do you do when you, you know that I want to have sex in the morning, but my lady ain't into it, so she's just going to turn on her side and just let me go at it? So there needs to be more uh, work uh that needs to be done there. We okay. need to make sure that we're recreating what desire looks like. We need to recreate what anticipation looks like. Desire, what is that? How would I define desire? Uh, the wanting and feeling to be inside your partner and bust mm -hmm. or bust on top of her or just do all the nasty things, right? Mm -hmm. But what gets you there is the anticipation, mm -hmm. right? You, Indeed. the sex talk, the nasty, whatever. And then it builds up your desire quality of the whatever you want to do to be nasty with it. And um, uh, uh, and so once you're doing that, you know, going on dates, doing all that, uh, definitely have that conversation on who what what initiating looks like and let her know, look, mm -hmm. now, I'm tired of initiating. I want you to get on top of me in the morning and ride out for, for this for the sun. Uh, for the hell sunlight yeah. Right I've definitely been and on so. strike. <laughs> I've definitely been on strike where I'm just like, yo, yeah. I'm laying on my back. And you need to ride this for the next 15 minutes because I'm not yeah. doing a damn thing because the last four days I've been putting in work. So yeah, I'm yeah. going on strike. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's a good point. Um, you know, when guys are sitting around, we're chopping it up, we're always telling us telling the, the fellas about our the, the one time where we were a superman, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of guys aren't vulnerable talking to other guys about the times where you were not vulnerable, um, where you weren't Superman, right? Where you where you may have come quick or something like I'm that. I'm vulnerable. I say the dick was trash. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, because you can't bat a thousand. Yeah. No one's gonna be perfect all the time, and it's like if I'm not pleasing you, I know I've pleased enough other people to know I'm not bad at this. So let me gonna... let me just speak to that too. Go ahead, my bad. Go ahead, go ahead. Did you refresh? I, I. I you're, you're absolutely right. We're expected, especially as black men, we're expected to bat a thousand. And I, I wish our sisters would understand that uh, before 21, we're going to have have at least one ED moment. It's <laughs> absolutely. Gonna look like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like ED, at least one before 21. Mm -hmm. Right. And so uh, by the time we're 40, we've had more than at least one ED moment. And that's OK. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't. We don't have to necessarily stay in that moment. Or if we do uh, have, you know, long term ED, there's so many things we can do. We don't talk about that with our women, but uh, our women need to understand that we're not going to bat a thousand. We're just simply not. We're not robots. Right. We can. And there may be there may be a small percentage of men that can bat a thousand. Uh, I haven't heard of one or come across one, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know. They're probably out there, but I, I, I can guarantee it's a very small percentage of them. Listen, in baseball, three out of ten gets you 150 million. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking oh that, man, um, I, have a, I have a question for you. Um, so, Yo, what's up? in in those moments where like you're struggling with the condom and you're having an ED moment, like what's what's happening in your mind at that 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 point? Is it is it like a is chemical? It psychological? Is, it, is it psychological? Is it chemical? Is there like a you know, like what happens to when you it's the, you have it on as dead and then you take it off as alive? You know? Yeah. If you're in a relationship, most of the time what's going on there is a relational issue. Mm. That's usually the first thing that that is the issue. Uh, and then we're looking at psychological and then maybe uh, a physical health physical issue health. after that. Uh, you know, when we're having ED moments, what we have to also understand is the sex center is uh, of our brain is uh, that center that controls our emotions. So that's, you know, our moods, how we're reacting to our, our, our partner or our woman, or if you're in the same sex situation, our man, uh, how you're reacting is, is up in our brain and how you're reacting to sex is up in our brain. So we get in our mental about it. And it's a lot of times a relational issue. And so, you know, when we can figure out what's going on with our relationship, a lot of those ED moments, condom or not, decreases. And then we can get a therapist and even a sex therapist. A lot of those ED moments decrease. Uh, and if we can find out, you know, physical health wise, what's going on with this uh, blood flow problems, problems, uh, 
a lot of those issues decrease. Uh, and, and hopefully we can have a, a health conversation here before this uh, this uh, interview or, or conversation is over with. Because uh, my brothers, we we got to get our health and our diet together, man. We not, we're not eating for long term sex, man. Right. I, w- I was going to mention that. Like, aren't some ED moments attached to cardiovas- cardiovascular? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, you definitely want to get in the gym. You don't have to lift the gym through the roof. Uh, moderate gym workouts can do you fine, right? And so uh, what I try to encourage people to do is definitely, of course, keep your doctor near, uh, get some uh, testosterone tests going. Uh, if you need maybe a stress test to see what's going on with your heart, uh, you don't necessarily always need a urologist. I think a doctor and a sex therapist, first and foremost, and then navigate where to go next. But uh, your l arginines helps you with the cardiovascular situation. Ashwagandha helps with, with all that as well. Um, eating leafy stuff um, for the nitric oxides to help the blood flow to the penis so it can raise like a bridge and get the work done. You know, we're not doing the greens. I remember a long time ago, I think it was a commercial. It was two dudes and dudes like, man, I want to get a salad. And dudes like, motherfucker, you're going to get a salad. Like, <laughs> you don't, don't want to know salads, man. We're in a bar. Like, so, you know, that, that shame situation, we got to start loving and caring our brothers so that they can live a healthy life so they can also have the healthy sexual life, too. You got to cut your boy down. have a salad, man. You He's probably cut. trying to break his woman's back. You got to cut down um, on the red meat and eat more watermelon. Yes, well, watermelon is important. Meat is oh, also important, excited. too, but there's so much carcinogens. <laughs> about that watermelon. So, so, got excited. Huh. so many carcinogens are, are in meat. You just you just never know. But protein is very important, man. Um, but yes, uh, watermelon, definitely eat it to the rind. Don't, don't just eat the red part. Eat it to the rind. Um, it's a C word. I, f- I forget the name of it. Uh Sertraline is, is very important when it comes to sexual functioning. Um, it's just, we look, a lot of the stuff in our, in our diet is black men works for us, but we, we we eat that much that works for us in our sexual uh, functioning. And then all the bad shit, we get about this much in our diet, right. right? So all the healthy shit is about that much. And then, so we got to, we got to, Eat in moderation and just be mindful of what we're eating, man. And we can eat long term and help make sure that we're, we're breaking backs until the last day that we are. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my fucking goal. I'm trying to break breaking backs, backs. <laughs> to, <laughs> until my last moment. But, we, but we, we talked about that. Like there's so much, uh, I, w- I guess, violent terminology attached to sex. Yeah, like that's, breaking that's back, that's I true. hit that, that's smashing. True. Yo, I'm about out. to shift them organs. <laughs> <laughs> damage, damage, damage. It. Kill him with yeah. it. You know, <laughs> I kill it. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So and, and is that know, something uh, that men should erase from their terminology when they're using it about sex? Or do some women love. want you to do that? To be honest, like some do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some some want to hear that because it helps get them going. Uh, but we have to be mindful of, of what we're saying and the energy we're using it in. So if we're talking about shifting this and shifting that, and we're not really doing that. Or if you, even if we are, like that's not healthy for women. <laughs> <laughs> women don't want their uterus flipped. Like if you got an 11 inch or swinger, like congratulations. But listen here. She don't want to flip, man. Like she, she's, she's not, my that's liver not is in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question too right. as well. I, I want to pose something at you. Like I was talking to um, an older person the other day, and they were saying that what's common knowledge that um, when couples are together, typically the woman is seeing that the guy is staying healthy, eating his greens and um, his vitamins, things things like that. Do you find like um, uh, single men aren't well, getting that same attention? I'm, I'm sorry. Single men aren't getting that same attention, but do you find that single men versus married men, who who's more sexually healthy? Uh, married men. Married um, men. It, stats stats show that married men typically have a healthier uh, sexual life. Um, Got it. Just and that's and that's probably unfortunate. That doesn't. I mean, not not unfortunate. That's fortunate for the ones that's working for. But uh, that can't apply to everybody, right? There's a lot of relationships, marriages where the sex. Is, is probably trash or the relationship is unhealthy. Uh, and then there's a lot of instances where single men are very healthy uh, and having healthy sex lives. But uh, stats show that, you know, relationships and marriage do lead itself to a healthier life and a longer life. And so if you're living a healthier and longer life, guess what? Sex is definitely going to be a factor that's going to live longer as well and be more effective and, and, and pleasurable 
as well. And that's just generally speaking. That's not, you know, specifically or looking at the quality of, of things. That's right. just uh, taking a brush and just stroking it across the whole situation. Yeah, that's right. a good point. One of the uh, previous episodes we did, we talked about using male enhancements. So can you talk about that? You know, are male enhancements suggested to be used for a healthy male? And then kind of talk about, you know, like you know, there's pills and things like that, but also talk about maybe toys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I use male enhancements. What does that look like? What we were just talking about, uh, eating watermelon, right? I'm aware that, you know, certain things uh, enhance my mood, enhance my sexual activity and all these other things. There's natural male enhancements. That's okay. We have to normalize that. Uh, I've used, um, I know we didn't get the permission to say this, but hopefully I'm going to say this, but uh, I've used Nugenics before. Uh, I've used the one that for that works for uh, 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 bulking up, and also the one for the sexual boost. The sexual boost did not; it did nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one for bulking up did nothing for me either. It, I didn't feel anything at all, uh, and so I stopped that. Uh, but you have to be careful with nugenics, uh, especially if you want to have children or still plan on having children. Having too much testosterone mm-hmm. can play a factor negatively in you having kids, but uh, I think we start to need, we need to start looking at, like I said earlier, ashwagandha, uh, uh, L-arginine. How do, spell, how do you spell that? Ashwagandha. Put them on a spot. Man, I need to go back to school. To spell. <laughs> Put them on a spot. You gonna have me leaving the show? Yo, baby, can you give me some Gandhi? Some ganja? What? Some ganja? Right. A S H W A N. I think G H A N D A or something like that. Okay. Yeah, so ashwagandha, uh, definitely make sure you get, um, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, arugula. Uh, mm-hmm. Arugula and um, spinach are really going to help you with the nitric oxides, right? That's male, That's natural male enhancements, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So we're not talking about actually going out and taking a pill and you're getting muscular and your dick is getting bigger or whatever else. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about eating right and uh, allowing your body to do what it's supposed to do as it's designed to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to enhance you to do that because uh, let's be real, as we are born, our body is, or is our, our testosterone is going to be attacked mm-hmm. daily. So we're going to lose testosterone over time. So uh, naturally we're going to enhance that so we can keep it as long as possible. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So I got a question for you and this, this is going to, this going to get, this going to rise the room. <laughs> oh, right. You talk about how black women need to be more nurturing when it comes to black men. Should black men be more nurturing to the sexual drives of women? Should we be okay with them wanting to have multiple partners and not, and not shame them? Mm. It, it depends. Are we looking at, well, I'm just going to go ahead and answer. Uh, if we're dating, yes, we need to let, we shouldn't shrink women's sexuality we're in a society where you know the man has to be pleased and by his woman uh and that makes a good sex experience but fellas we're going to have to understand that we're our bodies are set to give pleasure and receive and if we're only in it to receive and we're not giving it we're limiting our own sexual experience so let your woman do what she wants to, if she says this is what i feel i need to do at least have that discussion and if you're dating her, let her do what she want to do, man. Like it's, it's just dating at that point. And so when she, what you're allowing yourself to give her pleasure based on what she needs, you're going to get it back in return and you're going to enjoy it at a higher quality. Uh, but yes, I, I feel like women, if they feel like they need other partners, definitely have that discussion. Definitely see where you fit with that. If you can't do it, Get the hell up out of there, man. Don't, yeah. don't stick up so in there. Said, so he and, said it here first. Dr. Greg said black men should start letting their ladies fuck their ex. <laughs> that's, that's not what he Dr. said. Dr. Greg said it here first. Verbatim. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in that man e-box, inbox and cuss his ass out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, Greg, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Please, please promote your podcast right now to let us know where we can hear you and get all this information that you're giving out to make these bedrooms a lot happier. Yeah, man. It's uh, Compassion. C-O-M-E-P-A-S-S-I-O-N. And fellas, COVID fucked my situation up. And so, you know, we uh, couldn't, we couldn't air it or anything like that. So me 
and my friends are going to get back to filming it here uh, probably over the next month or so. Uh, but we're talking about a lot of things. We were talking about the P shot and the O shot. We talked about a poly situation with a couple in Dallas that was on the show. Uh, we talk about, uh, I had a conversation with uh, Jet Setting Jasmine, who is a licensed clinical uh, sex therapist. Uh, and she also is married to King Noir, who's a porn star. They're both porn stars, uh, but she's also a sex therapist. And she talks about a lot of great things. And he does a lot of educating, too. Um, I talked to my homeboy, uh, Funka Dineva, uh, about, uh, 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 I forgot the name of the show. Uh, it was a black show with strippers. P Valley. Uh, P but we're also Valley. Gonna talk I heard about, about that show. Yeah. Show's fire. Yeah. Show's and so fire. we're also going to talk about uh, straight men, sex, uh, gay men, sex, all that. If you identify as a black man, the sex needs to be talked about and normalized, man, because we, we're just all different. We all like different sex. And that's just the reality of it. Uh, but you can get in contact with me, get a, a, a session at kayatoday.com. That's www.kayatoday.com. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook at Boris Chestnut. Uh, or you can see me at Kaya or, uh, or even on Facebook at compassion, which is my sex event, uh, and sex education and podcast site and sex toys. I sell sex toys as well. Cool. All right. And, uh, you might've, uh, the audio might've glitched when you said your, uh, the name of your podcast is compassion, C O M E P A S S I O N. All right. And definitely. Thank you for, we'll have you back. Definitely. Cause you gave thank us you. Some, some great yeah, information. So, definitely have you back. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. I didn't want to end it, man. I don't yeah, know. All right. We're going to do the next one in Vegas. Well, hey, let's, do can, let's do it. Let's do it. If you're in a clubhouse, you can do it every Monday or one Monday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. All right, Greg. Y'all hit me up. Much, we'll, we'll figure something out. You got all right. it. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Right. All right, Greg. Right. Uh, wrap thanks it up? for joining us. You want, you want me to wrap uh, it up? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Greg. Thanks again for all the information and thank you for joining us again. Um, you know, uh, thank the fans for uh, listening to today's episode. Um, you know, if you haven't already, please go back and uh, download and, and listen to the uh, the previous 24 episodes, 25 episodes 25. of The Lane Show. Um, and if you want to support the show, uh, you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash The Lame Show and uh, support the show by buying us a drink for as little as $5 a drink or yep. 10 bucks a month. Yes, sir. Yep. And with that said, uh, you know, uh, Greg, thanks again. And uh, we'll awesome information. Thank All you right. so much. We'll All see right. you next week. We All out. Right. All right, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Thank you.